Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from the code called Trapping Rain Water. Now this is actually surprisingly straightforward, especially if you've already done container with most water. I'm going to link that down below. So if you haven't already, go check that one out. Because once you do that, you'll notice we're using almost the exact same logic for this problem. So what is this problem? We're given n non-negative integers representing an elevation map where the width of each bar is 1. Compute how much water it can trap after raining. So example one, this is our elevation map over here. We start off with zero, then one, then zero, two, and so forth. So how much water can we store? That's going to be six. But why is that? Well, thinking about this, not in terms of code or algorithms, just intuitively, if we took a cup of water and just started pouring, how much water would we be able to trap? Well, that depends on our container, our left and right edges. So over here, we have a left edge of one and a right edge of two. So we want to take the minimum of our edges. That comes out to one and we want to use the minimum because otherwise if we kept pouring, it's going to overflow from our lower edge. So our lower edge marks our height bound. So right now we have a height bound of one. So anything between these two bars is going to have a max height of one. And since our current bar height at this index between these two bars is zero, that gap just gets filled with water. So we have one minus zero units of water. Simple enough. Now, what about over here? So at this index over here, we're surrounded by a left edge of one and a right edge of one but our water is actually a height of two. Why is that? Again, right? If we had a cup of water and just kept pouring, our water is actually going to spread. So we're going to keep going up until we hit the highest left and right edge that we can. Now over here, the highest left edge comes from this edge over here. It's two, nothing else is higher than that. And on the right side, the highest edge is three, nothing else is higher than that on the right of this index. So the minimum between two and three is two. So that's going to be our height cap and the height of our own bar at this index is zero. So that entire space gets filled with water. So we have two units of water here. And for both of these indices, the bar is at one. So we only need to fill one more unit of water. So two minus one is just one. So we have one unit for both of these, which means if we go back to this unit over here, I actually lied. Our edge was not one and two. It's actually the left highest and the right highest. Now here, the left max highest height we've seen is one, but over here, the highest right max height we've seen is actually three. But regardless, the minimum between one and three is still one. So our unit of water here is one. And this makes sense, right? Because say this was also with three, then our minimum would have been between three and three. And that entire space would have just filled with three units of water. So we always want to take the highest point we've seen at our left side and our right side. Now over here, what is our highest right point? Well, that comes from two over here and our left point is going to be three over here. So we can make a water height of two. Our height is already at one. So this is going to be one. And over here, our height is two and our water heights two. So we can't add any more water here. So it's going to be zero. So adding up all our waters, we get a total of six. Now example two, we do the same thing. We're going to get nine. And just to visualize that a little bit, I'm just going to draw it out over here. So we have four, two, zero, three, two, five. Now, if you notice right off the bat, the highest edge over here is on the left and the highest edge is already on the right. So we already know the max height between all of these is going to be four. So if we do four minus two, we get two units of water from this index, four from here for a total of six so far, then one more from here, because right now it's three and this is two right now. So we get two more from here. So two plus one plus four plus two puts us at a grand total of nine, just as we were expecting. Now, one way to solve this problem is just to go through every single index and keep track of our left and right max edges. We initialized two arrays, keeping track of the max left edge we've seen and the max right edge we've seen. So we'd initialize left max and right max and go through our left max iterating through, just keeping track of the highest number we've seen up until the index we're on and do the same thing from the right. Keep iterating through, keeping track of the highest bar height we've seen up until that point. Then we would iterate through one more time, calculate the left max and right max at the index we're on, find that minimum and subtract from our own height. And in the end, sum up all of that to return the total amount of water trapped. So if we were to go ahead and submit this, it would be accepted. But there is a slightly more efficient way to solve this. Now for this, we're going to do something very similar to what we did for container with most water. So say I have the following example. It's similar to example two, just modified a little bit. Instead of zero, this is now six. I'm going to start off at both my edges. So I'm going to have a left and right pointer initialized to zero and length of height minus one. Over here, we have left at index zero and right at index five. Now, what is our max left and right edge? So left max and right max are going to be height of left and height of right. 
So right now our left max is going to be four and our right max is going to be the height at right, which is going to be five. And our current water trapped is going to be zero. Now, while our two pointers left and right don't meet in the middle, so while left is less than right, I'm going to check which is my smaller edge. So if left max is less than right max, I know my left max is going to be the height bound. So water trapped is going to be plus equals left max minus the height at my left. So height of left. So right now our left max is less than right max. So water trapped is going to be our left max minus the height at our left. So four minus the height at index zero is also so four is just going to be zero. So our water trapped right now is going to remain zero. Now what I wanna do is move that pointer in. So left plus equals one and update our left max. So left max is going to be the max of what we have right now and what we get at this new index. So height of left. So left is now here and our left max is the max between what we have right now and two. So it's gonna stay four. At this point, the maximum left edge we've seen is bar four. If that is not the case, if our left max is not less than a right max, so else, we're gonna do the exact opposite, but for the right side. So water trapped plus equals right max minus height of right, right minus equals one and update our right max. So right max is going to be the max between right max and height at right. And in the end, all we have to do is return water trapped. So going through this, right, we just finished one iteration of this while loop. So now at this index over here, we're back in this while loop. Left max is less than right max. So we go back in this if condition and we check what the water trapped at this cell is. So what is our left max minus height left? So left max is four and height at this index is two which means we can fill two units of water here. And why do we want to use left max? Well, we know left max was less than right max, so that's going to be our bound. That's our lower bound. So that's the height cap that we can form. So we can add two units of water to our water trapped. So at this point, our water trapped is two and we move left up. So left is now at index two and we calculate the new left max. So max left now is going to be what we have right now, which is four and six. So of course, we're going to go ahead and update this. Six is higher than four. Going back in this while loop, left max is no longer less than right max. So we don't go this if condition, we go in this else instead. The water trapped now is going to be right max minus height of right. Max right is going to be five. And we know we're on our own bar right now. So of course, subtracting our own height doesn't really do anything, doesn't add to water trapped. So it's going to be zero because height max is five and the height of where we are is also five. So we're adding zero to water trap, so it stays two, and we move right in. So right is now at index four. Our right max stays as is, it's still five. So we go back in our while loop, and again, we see that this is not true. Left max is not less than right max. So we go in this elf condition, water trapped plus equals right max minus height of right. So that's going to be five minus our current height, which is two. So that's going to be three. We can add three to our total water trapped which puts us at a total of five. So moving right in again, we now calculate the right max again, which remains unchanged and we're back in our while loop. Again, we don't go in this if condition, we go in here. And at this point, what is our water that we can trap? Well, our left edge is six and our right edge is five. So we're gonna use the right edge, the right max to calculate our height bound and subtract our own height from that. So five minus three is going to be two and we're gonna add that to water trapped. So that puts us at seven and we move right down. So right and left are both at index two and we update right max, so it's now six. And we go back in this while loop, but this is no longer true. Left is not less than right, they're both at index two. So we just return water trapped, which correctly stores seven. So what we did is we started on our edges, saw what the max left and right was, and we moved this smaller one in. So we go back to the beginning of the problem. We had a height of four and five. And of course we don't care about these first heights. It's always going to be zero because there's nothing to the left of this or the right of this to contain any water that might be stored here. So really we only care about these middle indices. So over here at index one, we had a left edge of four and a right edge of five. Now you may ask that we had a higher edge over here, which was six, but that doesn't matter because we're going by the smallest edge we've seen. This could have been a hundred, but we still would have been bound by this four, which is why we're moving the smallest edge in. And we keep doing that up until we converge in the middle. So let's go ahead and submit this. Indentation error, this should all be indented. And it is accepted. 
Now talking about space and time complexity. For time, we're going through every single element just once. So this is actually a linear scan and it's going to be O of n. If there are n elements, we're going to go in our loop n times. And for space, we're only keeping track of our left max, right max and water trapped along with the indices and pointers we're using. So this is going to be constant O of 1 because it has nothing to do with how big our input is. So O of n for time and O of 1 for space. Now we just went ahead and solved trapping rainwater. If you have any questions whatsoever, of course, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.